Hey guys, Level Cap here, and a lot of great looking new games were announced this year at E3. I can't talk about all of them, so I wanted to cover the ones that stood out the most to me. Here are my top 10 games of E3. First up is unsurprisingly Battlefield 1. Getting to play BF1 as part of the big reveal event at EA Play was an incredible experience. And let me rephrase that, it was a surreal experience. Not only was I playing one of the most beautiful looking Battlefield games I've ever seen for the first time on a brand new awesome conquest quest map but I was also standing 10 feet away from Snoop Dogg smoking a joint like it was just I had to do a double take I had to pinch myself it was just like is this happening right now is this what's actually happening and aside from being surrounded by celebrities and actually having Snoop Dogg in my Battlefield 1 squad while we played Conquest the game itself was actually good in fact I'll go as far to say that it's great now granted I've only played one map and I haven't really gotten a feel for the overall balance of the game or any of the metagame or anything like that but I was having a blast the graphics are unbelievably awesome and it's a battlefield game yeah it's probably gonna launch with a few bugs here and there but ultimately we know that dice is now gonna support their battlefield titles from beginning to end and something that can be a little bit harder to communicate when you're not actually there with headphones on is the sound effects the sound effects in this game I don't understand how dice continuously does this but they always have the best sound hands down and Battlefield 1 is no exception. They've taken it to the next level beyond Battlefield 4. In addition to that, we're also getting what the fans have been clamoring for for a long time and that's Bad Company 2 levels of destruction. In fact, they've really gone far beyond what Bad Company 2 offered. Not only can you take down buildings in highly, highly natural and realistic ways, much more realistic looking than Bad Company 2, but the ground destruction is absolutely insane. World War One has the sort of no man's land iconic imagery of just battlefields that are torn up with craters. Well, you can do that in this game. You can do it to a grassy field. If there's enough shells and mortars and artillery and grenades that go off in a field, it will turn from a nice grassy field to a muddy cratery wasteland and you can actually use those craters to hide in you can mount bipods on the edge of a steep enough crater it's just insane what they're doing with the fidelity of destruction i mean they're years ahead of what any other game offers now honestly i could spend this whole video gushing about how cool battlefield one is without question it's the highlight of e3 for me but if you really want all the nitty-gritty details you can check out this video or even any of my other videos that have come out in the past week there's a ton of information regarding BF1. The next game I want to talk about is also a new entry into a long-standing franchise Resident Evil 7. Aside from having a really great trailer it also had a playable demo launch at E3. Now this demo isn't part of the main game but it has a ton of easter eggs and secrets to unlock the biggest of which might not even be found yet. It's also a huge departure from the design of recent Resident Evil titles which is a good thing. The first few Resident Evil titles were horror games, not the action shooter horror spectacles that the later games became. So seeing Capcom return to this series roots is actually kind of refreshing. The horror genre has really exploded in the past few years thanks to games like Amnesia and Dead Space, but Resident Evil really was one of the first proper horror games to go big. Resident Evil 7 being a return to form for the franchise is sure to do interesting things to the genre, especially considering it's also going to be a VR capable game. So if Simpleton two-dimensional horror just isn't cutting it for you anymore you can pop on your VR headset and experience it in true stereoscopic three dimensions now as we mentioned Dead Space earlier Prey's new trailer almost looked like a reimagining of Dead Space Prey 2 was originally announced at E3 2011 but work on that game was scrapped when Bethesda acquired the rights to it the new Prey is considered both a reimagining of the original Prey and a spiritual sequel to the System Shock 2 which is also getting an actual sequel by the original developers. Prey looks like the kind of sci-fi survival horror game that we haven't seen since Dead Space 2. With Dead Space 3 being a total departure from what made the first two games great, that's been a real gap in the space survival horror genre. Alien Isolation and Soma certainly came close, but they're more like puzzle games than anything else. Hopefully Prey lives up to the hype. 
Prey's developers also premiered new footage of their upcoming game Dishonored 2. The first Dishonored was a massive hit and got high praise for how unique each playthrough could be, so their emphasis on increasing how unique each playthrough will be in Dishonored 2 was great to hear. They also developed a new engine just for the game to get the most out of the setting and the visual style of the game. Visually, Dishonored 2 looks like a massive upgrade over the original. The gameplay also looks much improved with more abilities and options for dealing with the game's enemies and traversing the environment. Now Mass Effect the Andromeda's trailer this year also looked to be pretty incredible. It's unclear if the actual gameplay will look as good as the trailer, but it's being developed in the Frostbite engine, so I think it'll end up looking pretty similar, if not just gorgeous in general. With the Andromeda being less of a direct sequel to Mass Effect 3 and more of a continuation of the franchise, Bioware have a lot of room to try new things. They've said it will be an open world game, which is a big change for the franchise, so it'll be interesting to see if they make any other big changes to the gameplay. The addition of a grappling hook and more fleshed out mech combat mechanics have really added a lot of depth to Titanfall 2. Aside from the balance issues and some of the unfair mechanics, Titanfall's biggest issue was depth. After playing the game for several hours, I really felt like I had experienced everything that there was to in that game, and there wasn't going to be much more evolution on the cool, emergent gameplay the more I played. However, if I had to summarize my thoughts on Titanfall 2, I'd say that veteran Titanfall players will feel right at home with Titanfall 2, but it's got a lot more variety and depth than the first game. If you want a full breakdown of my experience with Titanfall 2, check out this video. There's a lot of things that Titanfall 2 improved on and I'm excited to play the finished game. Now this year's standout trailer has to be the teaser for Hideo Kojima's new game, Death Stranding. Featuring a naked Norman Reedus and tons of weird imagery, I can only imagine what the game is going to be like, considering it's Kojima getting to do basically whatever he wants with a brand new IP. Death Standing is just the beginning stages of pre-production, so Kojima has been very light on the details regarding what players can expect. He's made it clear that the goal for the gameplay is to be familiar, but also not fit the typical action or stealth action genres. Silent Hill and Metal Gear Solid both redefine their genres and elevated what people expected from games like them, so if there's one thing we can be sure of, it's that Death Standing won't be a typical game. While Death Standing teaser was a standout, God of War's gameplay trailer was easiestly the most impressive and the most upfront gameplay trailer shown at E3. Previous God of War games have always seemed to go the extra mile visually, and the new one looks like no exception to this rule. Unlike the previous games, however, the new God of War's gameplay looks a lot less cartoony and much more grounded. I'm sure diehard God of War fans might be a little put off by the changes in the gameplay, but I don't think it's any cause for alarm. This looks to be just as epic in scale as any previous God of War game, if not more so. Another game that looks epic in scale, the new Zelda game also had a gameplay trailer launch at E3, as well as over an hour of gameplay footage uploaded to the Nintendo YouTube channel, and it all looks incredible. Nintendo is the kind of company that throws everything they have at their games, regardless of how big or small they might be. Zelda Breath of the Wild looks like Nintendo's next big game, so that means it's guaranteed to be incredible. Visually, the game looks like a great blend of fantasy and realism with that signature Nintendo polish for style. It's been quite a while since Nintendo released a game of this scale, considering they're about to throw down with Sony and Microsoft in releasing the NX next year, I'm sure Zelda will be the epic launch title Nintendo needs to sell the hardware. And last up, South Park The Fractured But Whole has one of the funniest E3 presentations ever. The actual game, much like the first game Stick of Truth, looks almost like playing an episode of South Park. The real standout from the gameplay they showed off was just how well written it is. A lot of what makes South Park such a great show is how relevant all the humor is to current events. It's harder to do this with a game because it takes so much longer to make the game compared to an episode of South Park. So seeing Fractured But Whole as being funny as it is without relying on current events was great. I think it really says a lot about just how good the writing staff of South Park actually is. All in all, I'd say this year's E3 was pretty incredible. There's a lot of games to look forward to in the next year or so. Be sure to check out my hands-on reviews of BF1 and Titanfall 2 if you missed them. There's a lot of new info about both games. 
And I got to mention one more game that I realize probably 99% of my audience doesn't care about, but this is something I am playing for sure. This is Star Trek Bridge Crew. This title basically allows you to live out your Star Trek fantasy in virtual reality. You can be one of the bridge crew, whether it's the captain or an engineer or maybe even a science officer. It looks like it's going to be a highly team based game where you all have to be working together with either friends or random people that you're playing with in order to beat the missions or achieve your goals. I don't know too much else about it, but it looks awesome and I want to play it. Anyway, that wraps it up for the top picks of E3. What do you guys think? Do you like my choices? Are there some games that you think should have been on the list? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.